couple months ago, my husband Nick and I celebrated 17 years of togetherness and lifing as a unit. In true Jorney fashion, I couldn't allow our anniversary to pass without marking it and celebrating it in some way, shape or form. So I decided to have a heart to heart conversation with Nick about the state of our marriage and our relationship while also having an honest and open conversation around what it's like to be married to an entrepreneur. But the hope is that the conversation also serves you as you listen and you build your journey to purpose in connection, collaboration, and communication with the people around you. So if all of this sounds really juicy, <laughs> then I hope you keep listening through to the end of the episode for some shared insights and tips on how you can improve communication and create open and honest dialogue with your partner as you journey to purpose purpose for yourself. One feel good thing at a time. You ready? Let's get into it. Hey guys, you're listening to the Journey to Purpose podcast with Erica Lasan. The road to joy and purpose can feel unfamiliar, uncomfortable, and sometimes because others don't always understand it, it can be isolating and lonely. For almost 30 years of my life, I identified myself through roles and titles that put pressure on me to perform, but often left me feeling empty and void of purpose. But things got real when I discovered I'd be gaining yet another new title, that of mommy. It was at that point of surrender that I chose joy. Now as a joy strategist and creative consultant, I help women and entrepreneurs in transitional phases of life find joy, purpose, and healing in what's next. In this podcast, we dive deep into stories, lessons, and transparent conversations to uncover vision manifesting and joy gems that are sure to help you rediscover, reconnect, and recommit to your purpose and identity and joy. One feel good thing at a time. Hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Journey to Purpose podcast with me, Erica Lasan. And I am so excited that you're here for today's conversation because it's going to be a real one. I want to apologize for this week's episode being a little late. Last week, the kids were on winter break. They call it second winter break. I don't really understand why that is, considering the break is in the last week of February. At that point, we're almost in spring. But it is what it is. We made the absolute most of the week by spending a ton of quality time together and doing a road trip down to Florida. It was an 18 hour drive down to Florida. And within that time in the eight days that we were away, we hit 12 states. We drove over 4,000 miles. I think if I calculated correctly, we spent at least 63 hours together in the car. And I'm so grateful for all of the friends and family that we we got to see along the way. We stopped in two places in Florida. And while we were there, we took a day trip to New Orleans, <laughs> New Orleans, because Nick and I have always wanted to go to New Orleans. It's one of the places that's on our travel bucket list. And now we can officially hit check because we got to spend the day there with the kids. We also made our way back up north. We stopped in North Carolina to visit Nick's brother. And then we stopped in Maryland after that to visit my family <laughs> before heading back to New Jersey and getting the kids back in time for school. So it was a wonderful week well spent. But one of the coolest things that happened on that break was that we made a special announcement. If you are subscribed to my newsletter, also known as Journey Mail, then you're probably already aware of what that announcement is, but our family will be growing. And as you'll probably hear later in today's episode, Nick and I are expecting our third child together. So we will now be a family of five at some point in the year. And we are very excited. So this conversation around navigating love, marriage, and entrepreneurship couldn't come at a better time because it is truly a reflection of how we've grown together over the past 17 years and how we'll continue to grow as we navigate this new season as a couple by basically starting all over again as it relates to having newborns and all of the fun stuff that comes with that. If you know, you know. Okay. <laughs> Now that the stage has been set and you're clear on what we're going to be chatting about today, I don't want to delay the goodness any further. So buckle up, get comfy, because we're diving in. Sitting here today with me is the man, the myth, the legend himself, my boo, the hubby, Nicholas Reed. 
Dun, 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 dun. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> Guys, this is a real treat. Y'all don't even know. Nick Nick typically doesn't participate in my shenanigans when it comes to content. Maybe like once every seven to eight years. So you're in for a treat in today's conversation. I'm really excited. How are you doing? Nicholas, okay. welcome to the Journey to Purpose. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. The man, the myth, the legend. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm saying I talk about you a lot. Yeah, thank you for that introduction. And um happy to partake just once in your your podcast and your yeah, whatever you have going on right now. Ooh, I'm excited for this conversation. We're gonna be talking about the rules of engagement. Today, I have some mystery questions, just so you guys know. Nicholas does not know what the questions are. He does not know what this conversation is going to be about. And you just know it's going to be a good time. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not the type of person that I like, you know, not knowing. I like to know where I'm heading, what I'm getting into. So this should be an interesting time. He put me on a timer, y'all. We got 45 minutes to hit all these things. So just so you kind of get an idea of where we're going with this, okay? This conversation is meant to serve as a three-part situation, okay? The first is a personal check-in. The second being a little something-something to help the people learn how they can navigate love, marriage and entrepreneurship based on some joy gems and some lessons that we may have gained along the way, just based on, you know, some of our experiences. And the last part of this conversation is to kind of help not only us, but those who may be listening, understand how they can plan their journey ahead when it comes to love, marriage and entrepreneurship. So that's where the ride is heading. That's where the journey is taking us. Are you down? Yeah, I want to call myself an expert at any of those fields that you mentioned, any of those three fields that you mentioned, but I'll try to provide as much insight <laughs> as I can. Yeah, I'm willing today and only today <laughs> to, One night only. <laughs> to share my thoughts. You ready? We're hopping in. Sure. Starting now. First question coming in hot. What is it like being married to me? <laughs> <laughs> Honest answers. We we keeping it a hundred today. <laughs> yeah, we keeping it a hundred. I don't know how much of this is actually gonna make it to the published episode. There may be some cuts, but the conversation we keeping it a hundred. Yeah. What is it like to be married to you? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. The answer that would sound nice yeah we're not doing pc answers we're not doing pc answers yeah Yeah, married to you is wonderful it's like a walk in the park being married to you is a journey i grew up in a rest foreign environment where you know the traditional marriage wasn't something i embraced growing up it wasn't something that i look up and be like man you know what when i grew up I want to be married. So it wasn't something that was on my agenda or my goal to, yeah, be married and, you know, have kids and do this. So being married to you is a journey. We've been together for 17, 18 years, very long now. And every day, you know, learn about each other. We enjoy each other company and just try to help each other the best that we can to be better people. Being married to you, it's it's a changing thing because you're always changing. You know, like <laughs> nah, aren't we all though? I'm yeah. saying, isn't that like the journey of yeah, life? And that's that's the journey of life. And we gotta recognize that like as individuals, we are changing. What we like yesterday, we might not like it today. Just trying to enjoy each day. And I think I'm in the I'm in a point of my life right now where I'm just you know, trying to enjoy each day, enjoy each moment. So I feel like it's peaceful. And we, we're in this peaceful journey, like time period right now where 
everything here, you know, it's peaceful, you know, I like it. I like peace. So do I. Because real talk, if we're just keeping it 100, which we said we would, I feel like in the time that we've been together, you've probably gotten four different versions of me. Like, yeah, which is... Because like, we grew up, to, we've grown together, you know? I think we started dating when I was 19. You were 20. And, I mean, do the math. Over a decade and a half that we've been knowing each other through college, postgraduate, figuring out career stuff, then transitioning into parenthood together. And now we're both in this season where I don't know if I'll ever feel like a full blown adult, but <laughs> yeah. like adult, we've really like seen each other grow into adulthood together. And it has been a journey and I'm really excited and I'm really grateful that it's been with you because I have learned so much about myself because of being with you. You have truly yeah. helped me become a better, I, I want to say a better woman, but like g generally speaking, I feel like you've really just helped me become a better person. Yeah, I'm saying part of relationship and being together is allowing the person that you're with to, I guess, explore themselves and be who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the transition from, because yeah, we don't ch stay the same throughout our life. Like we always change and we always evolve and always learning something new. So just being able to accept the fact that, you know, the person that you got with 10 years ago is not the same person, you Real know? Talk. So yeah, just allowing that process to happen and kind of embrace it. You've definitely embraced it really well because Dennis knows there was a season where I was like, I don't know who I am. <laughs> I don't know what I want in life anymore. You really just like held me down. And, do you and know I, what you want in life now? I do. All I right. really do. But I'm but saying you know, that's going to change. I feel like it's always changing and it's probably going to change again. You know, like we are expecting a child. That's going to change the dynamic of or a living situation. And I think it's just a matter of, you know, communicating and being acceptance. Yes. But I also feel like that flexibility is part of what has allowed me to fully embrace. At one point when I was like, I really don't know what I'm doing, just exploring what I was supposed to do after graduation. I, I share this story often about how after graduating from college, when I was working at Warm Thoughts, I would call you every day on my lunch break, <laughs> crying. And the lunch break was an hour. And you would like sit there and you would listen so patiently to me, like navigate all of my internal thoughts and the things that I was like processing, but didn't fully understand. And there was this one particular time that I remember just being like, I hate this. Da, da, da. And you, you asked me one question that blew my mind and it kind of changed the trajectory of things. And you were simply like, well, what do you want to do, Erica? And I don't know if you asked me that question out of frustration. <laughs> I probably I don't remember. I don't yeah. know if you asked me the question out of frustration or if you were just genuinely like curious as to, well, you call me every day crying about what you don't want. What is it that you do want? But in that moment when you asked me that question, it really set off a light bulb about the fact that I had never taken a moment to pause and really think about what I wanted because I was so busy thinking about what I hated about where I was. In the years since, you've really just allowed me to go through this process and this journey of getting to know myself again, getting to try all the things, like literally like any and every idea I have, you're patient enough to listen to me as I'm processing the things. And then you're also present as I test out the things, you know, and you're always a solid space, like a, a place to call home to like kind of come back to even when things don't work out. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for you. And I'm really grateful to be on this journey with you and for you allowing me to go on this journey. Cool. I'm happy I could be that base that because we all need kind of like a base something we could kind of fall back on like something that's like oh yeah an anchor yes yeah so like an anchor you know so yeah happy to provide that service not the service <laughs> <laughs> okay you ready for the next question sure all right 
best and worst part of marriage best and worst part of marriage yes yeah that's a that's a good question from a person that's been married for six years is it six is it seven years is it eight years babe nine is it nine (laughs) you don't know what is it how many is it yeah the best and worst part of eight (laughs) <laughs> best and worst part of marriage like being marriage it can be a challenge and it can be joyful so to think of like the best part the best part is spending time and enjoying the journey with the person that you're with mm-hmm. you know like experiences mm-hmm. like this past weekend or last weekend, we went to Florida and it was an experience. We enjoy spending time with each other, watching each other grow and just being present in each other's life and creating memories. I think that's one of the best part of being married. It's just like, you know, having that stable situation where it's like, we're together, we support each other and we're growing together. We're hopefully getting hope old together (laughs) so i think you know it's the best part the worst part is for some people is wanting to have a little bit of space sometime because being with someone and seeing them every single day (laughs) sometimes you kind of just want to like yeah like i need a day that's real yeah and that's so not having that day it can be it can be hard at times. Um, <sighs> lack of communication can create a lot of <sighs> a lot of conflict. So, a part of I guess I would say one of the worst part is not communicating and creating that conflict that not understanding each other. But for me, the best part is, you know, the journey of, you know, raising a family, you know, like just creating memories. Yeah, I definitely agree. That whole feeling of being with somebody all the time and sometimes just wanting to have a day or a moment, not even a full day, like a moment for yourself. I think it's really important because I feel like that's something that you often don't see depicted in marriages i think the idea is when you get with somebody it's like oh my forever person you know you're up under each other's arms all the time but you really do as you enter marriage need to remember that you as a person need to be good as a person you need to know who you are you need to have hobbies you need to have friends outside of mutual friends you know and i think that when i when we started when we got married I didn't recognize that until after we had kids. And then I was like, I need some me time. I need some alone time, you know? And I felt really bad. I, I talked about this in the last podcast episode, but at one point I felt really bad expressing that to you because I was like, I don't know how he's going to take this. I don't know if he's going to think something about it. But in communicating that, you were very receptive to it. And it really blessed me to know that you were supportive of it. But it's crazy because as I went through that process, I was, I also began to realize how how helpful it was for me. But it was like, I want you to have that too. You know, I think everybody should have it, you know, because it's really important. It's, it's even good for the kids, for them to recognize that it's good to have personal time to reflect and, you know, connect with who they are before they start trying to please or appease or be something to someone else you know even in terms of just being a kid with friends you know you have to remember that you're an awesome person before you're somebody's bff you know (laughs) so yeah i agree getting to the nitty-gritty as far as you and your personal journey what is your purpose or at least what do you think it is in this season Hmm. i think this is a conversation we had and um it's something that i'm trying to double down on because as a male you know like a father husband you know like your purpose is to provide a safe comfort and environment for your family 
<laughs> your purpose is to provide for your family. Like if you can't provide, you know, shelter and food and whatever for your family, then it's kind of like, yeah, what are you really doing? So I think a big part of my purpose in this season is to provide that environment for my family. Like there's other purposes that, you know, I'm trying to figure out aside from being a provider. But right now it's to provide a safe, safe area for my family. So when you talk about purpose right now, that's the main thing that comes to my mind. Mm. As far as personal purpose, you know, that's a different story. I know it's 2024 and trying to say man and woman, but as a man, if you don't provide a safe face for your, for your family, you know, like you can't be upset when your kids aren't doing certain things that they're supposed to do. Mm. So yeah, it's providing, you know, clothes, shoes, out there, like whatever for your family. Mm. I really appreciate that being your response because I feel like it does, I don't know, as someone who considers this conversation around purpose and vision and stuff, I remember at one point asking you this question, like, what do you think your purpose is? Like, what do you do for fun? Da, 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 da. And I couldn't really understand why for you it was never about fun, <laughs> you know? But especially in this season, having been like, home with the kids for the past six years, I really appreciate your perspective and your sacrifice and in taking on that as your purpose for this season, because it really has allowed, honestly speaking, me a lot of freedom to pursue my purpose and my passions while also being at home with the kids. But it's really allowed me to double down on my purpose in this season, which is and has been very fruitful, not only for myself, but I think also for the family, you know, in, in different ways than I probably would have expected when we first started this journey together. But I appreciate your sacrifice. I do have a follow up question to that, though, because you mentioned that being your purpose for this season. But then you also spoke about your personal purpose. And I almost want to ask why you feel that the two things can't be like aligned or one in the same. I know that you're on your journey, your, your <laughs> own journey to purpose. That's a completely different conversation. But at any point, do you feel like there could be alignment? Because I see it. I see many ways that that could happen. But for it, it just, I don't know if, if sometimes the conversation or the conception around a man's sole purpose being to provide for his family. I don't believe that that's your sole purpose. You're also one of the most creative, ingenuitive, like patient and amazing people that I know. So to hear you say like in this season is this, but personally I'm trying to figure it out. I'm like, you could do anything. <laughs> yeah, you know? I hear you and I understand your question, but I feel like, you know, right now the main focus is the family. So it's hard to find something that brings you joy that also provide. And I'm saying that because I know there's a lot of starving artists out there. They're phenomenal. They're great at what they do, but it's not providing, you know, like it can pay their bills. So they're out on the street. And I think about it also like, so I ran semi-professionally and I never considered myself like a runner, like a real runner. Which is wild, y'all, because you tried out for the Olympics. Wait. Because <laughs> it's something where I always thought about it as this is like, yo, if I'm not getting paid for it, if I can't pay my rent off of it, am I really that, you know? And I look at professionals as that also. I'm like, all right, so you were a singer or you're an actor. Are you really an actor if, you know, like for the past 20 years, you've been grinding, trying to act, and you can't pay your bills off of it. You can't buy food. You can't survive off of it. Are you really an actor? Are you really, you know, serious about your craft? Mm. But that's just my perspective. Yeah. My personal, like, I'm trying to find that right now, mm -hmm. and I feel as far as purpose, that's something to look at is 
you know, would I be happy doing this, you know, like five years from now, 10 years from now? And I think a lot of people jump on things that are hot right now. Yeah. Like Grand Island is a thing. Like it's <laughs> hot right now. Like OnlyFans is a thing. It's, like, it's hot right now. So like they jump on it. But like, is it something that, you know, you want to do 20 years from now, you know, 10 years from now? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I hear you. I feel like that that's a conversation around differentiating purpose and passion, which is something that I probably the past 13 years, but I learned to distinguish based on so many things that I've done over time. You, you've seen me do a whole lot of stuff. And at one point I remember when I was doing like five things at once, I was blogging, blogging, making jewelry, doing interviews for people, creating content for other people. And you were like, pick one thing. And I was like, but I want to do them all. And you were like, yeah, but you have to really focus on one thing. And I remember resisting it for so long, but it wasn't until I was like, all right, actually I'm too burnt out to try to do all the things. And I focused on one that I was really able to find the underlying purpose. So I, I agree with you in terms of things being hot and stuff, but the external factors that may define success. I always hope that people don't lim- allow that to limit them from, from pursuing the thing that they're actually supposed to be doing. Because even to your question of if you're not getting paid for this thing, are you that thing? You are that thing, whether somebody else validates you in doing it or not, you know, because you're actively doing it. Whereas there are some people that don't actually practice the craft, but they get the recognition and they're horrible at it. For some people, and especially with artists, they may just not be very business minded, you know? So you need somebody to help you figure out how to manage your expenses, or you may need a manager to help promote you or speak on your behalf because you may be shy, but you may be a really talented yeah, artist. I'm saying I agree with you. And we all, we all have things that we're strong at and things that we're not so strong at. And it's recognizing the things that we're strong at and doing those things great and the things that we're not strong at getting help like that's yeah, what you know talk. create that that balance yeah try not to you know be good at everything because you can't not a i don't know if you can like be you good can. at everything that's true and you know what i really appreciate appreciate about this stream of thought at one point when i started to recognize the value of literally just focusing on the things that you do well aka the things that bring you joy and figuring out what those things are and the value that they provide not only for yourself and how you feel but also to others around you i began to take some of that understanding and apply it to the home or how we run our home. You know, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it's never really been an an explicit conversation where it's like, you're really good at this thing. You should just handle this thing. I'm really good at this thing. I should just handle this thing. But I also feel like in being flexible and learning each other, but also having conversations when stuff does come up, and being honest about it, which is not always the easiest thing, because sometimes it's like, oh, I want to have this <laughs> conversation right now. But, <laughs> but every time we have the conversation, it may be uncomfortable in the moment and it may be a little hard in the moment. But I feel like at the end, there's always more better understanding on the other side that gets us so much further than if we would have just avoided the conversation altogether just because of the momentary discomfort. You know? Yeah, uh, I agree. So I wanted to ask you about your vision currently, but I think I kind of want to ask you, what brings you joy? <laughs> <laughs> it comes back to... It uh, always yeah. comes back to joy. Joy. Yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, like, it's life. Now, now it's waking up in the morning. I getting up every morning that bring me joy like getting up seeing the kids seeing you you know like just being grateful i'm very grateful for for life i'm very grateful for every moment so if you ask me what bring me joy and it might seem cliche but it's it's just waking up every morning because life is short the fresh air, like going outside, seeing the birds, just reading. Because I know I'm fortunate to 
be where I'm at right now. I feel the same way. Like, there are some days when I walk outside and it's like, especially like after a fresh rain and I'm like, you know, you just want to fill your lungs with it. Like breathe in that, breathe in, breathe in that sweet air kids. And they're like, you know, it's the little things. But again, I think that being with you really helped me gain this perspective because I'd always considered myself before meeting you like a city person, like hustle, bustle, go, go, go. After we got together and you were talking about Jamaica and how things are slower and also just watching you and how you move, you know, <laughs> you move at a slower pace. Like literally the only place that he's fast is on the, on the track. Yeah, but like but it's everywhere funny else because you... in high school, they used to say that. Yeah, so you move so slow. I, used, you know, I try to take my time and like, <laughs> There's no rush, you know. But yeah. it's like, you know, going to track and I ran fast. And it's like, yeah, you move so slow, like Everywhere walking down else. the hall. Even the way you would like take time to think about things. I would ask you a question and it's like, there was always a pregnant pause with your response. And I don't know, I just remember kind of admiring that and just even thinking about like health and holistic health and well-being. I feel like I grew up using the microwave a lot, you know, microwavable dinners and Nigerian food, of course, but just not even sitting down to eat meals really, you know? And when we got together, you just kind of introduced me to this whole different understanding of how life could be. And for a really long time, even in the journey to purpose, when I was working in the city and stuff, it was really nice to kind of come back home to you and this perspective of just being simple and not needing to do the most, like not needing to be dressed up all the time, or I don't know, I guess like put on airs in some way, you know, but really embracing just being and allowing yourself to be yourself. Thank you for being yeah. who you are, you know, and the perspective that you bring. And like, you know what it is? It's not even perspective. I honestly feel like it's just the fact that you're so comfortable and confident with who you are and who you've always been, which was, it's honestly one of the reasons why I've always been attracted to you. But it was one of the things that in my mind set you apart from all of the people that we went to school with and why I was so intrigued by you and why I was like, mm. Yeah. But he also has I'm a saying. great smile. Like <laughs> the first time I saw your smile, I was like, who's this? Where he come from? The thing is, like, we make life complicated. It's true. With, you know, like, our, all our wants and needs. But, like, you know, life is simple. I, in my opinion, like, life, life is simple. You know, like, we got all that we, we want. You know, like, we got all our needs. So something, like, I want to instill in the kids is just being, like, just be grateful. Like, yeah, That's like, true. be grateful. And I'll, I say sometimes, you know, some people would kill for what you have. That's true. They like, would basically die for what you have. So, like, just be grateful. That conversation around gratitude, for a really long time, I didn't really get it. At one point in my faith journey, I, I, it finally clicked, for me, at least, you know, where it's like, oh, when you're grateful for the things that God has given you, even the little things, then you're able to recognize, one, how you can use those resources and leverage them better. Because I think a lot of times people want more or, or it's like, I need this thing in order to get to the next thing. But then they aren't even fully making, taking full advantage of what they already have. And I remember at one point in even my entrepreneurship journey, I remember literally praying, praying this. I was like, Lord, where are you going to give me money? <laughs> you know, like, Lord, like all I need is X amount. I just need money. And I remember, I kid you not, it was like the Lord spoke to me and he was just like, but if I gave you that, what would you even do with it? And I was like, huh? like, what, what would I do with it? I don't know. I don't even think I would have been a good steward of what I would have gotten. That season really taught me about being grateful for what I have and it's something that over the years has really been applied to other areas of life outside of career, everyday things like enjoying the time that you may have with somebody, you know, because at the end of the day, life is short and you never know when what you have or if it will be taken away, you know. So I love that answer. You've been talking a lot about love, marriage and entrepreneurship already, but now we're getting to the, the gravitas of the conversation, the meat and potatoes. You ready? Cool. So I'm here. Okay. <laughs> In your opinion, what can be some of the biggest stressors or triggers of being married to an entrepreneurial spouse? What are some things that 
you think other people should probably keep in mind, consider, discuss as you're becoming coupled with someone who is an entrepreneur? Because I know that this isn't something you signed up for <laughs> when we got exactly. together. And you this you did was, not sign up for, for being was, with this, a full-time entrepreneur. This, yeah. It was just a like, oh, we doing it type situation. The number one thing is communication. Like mm. if someone, before you get married or, you know, with someone and they tell you, I would like to be an entrepreneur. I would like to pursue this entrepreneur journey. Sitting down and talking, be like, yeah, what do you really want to do as far as your entrepreneurship? Really dive in to see whatever it is because entrepreneurship is not glamorous. It's, it's, really it's, not. it's, not, it's, not, it's not what people all. make it seem. <laughs> and we live in America where should cost a lot of entrepreneurs they're not really making that money but they're not going to tell you they're not making that money because it's a persona you know that saying it's like you got to fake it till you make it but, but like, here we talk about faking it till you make it because yeah. <laughs> faking it just adds a lot of unnecessary stress yeah. there's a whole episode on it if y'all want to check it out do that it's the second season episode of the season anyway so. yeah but yeah you gotta fake it till you make it you have to like pretend like you gotta try and be in like certain rooms when I don't know. I just feel like it's a conversation that should be had before, you know, any type of serious relationship. And you have to have a base. If both persons are entrepreneurs, like, it's great. But I feel like it creates a lot of conflict. Because, you know, like two negatives, it's like, <laughs> or two positives, however you want to look at it, can understand each other. But at the same time, yeah, you, you need a base. Yeah. Yeah. Like a foundation. Yeah. And that's 45 minutes. But we're having so much fun. Based on what I'm hearing you say, you think that one of the biggest stressors or triggers of being married to an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spouse, is the, is the could be a lack of communication prior to pursuing that yeah. career track, if you will. Yeah. Which is true, honestly, because I think we kind of just stumbled into this. You know, it was something where I was really unhappy looking for a corporate job. I never felt very settled in corporate. I also feel like corporate just never did me right <laughs> when I was after graduating during the recession, looking for so many jobs and feeling yeah. like I was never validated, paid what I was worth or, you know, fully engaged in doing and I think work that's, that I love. That's that's your experience and everyone have like people have different experience mm -hmm. some people you know they graduated and they went in the corporate world and they love it but not all corporate experience are bad it's not honestly now that i am in this position where i've created a business that i love and now i work with corporations now i love corporate because I am doing something that I actually enjoy. I'm doing work that I feel purposed by. And I get to basically use all of my gifts, talent, skills, and basically going to work for me is play at this point. But it's because yeah. I'm very clear on how my joy really aligns with my purpose and how my purpose can be used to serve corporations. And I don't feel like I'm just sitting around working for a paycheck. But that is a process. If someone is becoming coupled with an entrepreneur or they even think they may want to pursue that at some point to sit down and have a real conversation around like timelines, goals, finances, <laughs> because I think yeah. that that's something that I avoided personally. I know that you're like the numbers guy. This is like your real house. You find a lot of joy in it and you're really good at it. But for me, it was always something that gave me the ick <laughs> and made me feel really itchy all the time. And I also think that discussing it made our relationship a little bit better. There was one point when I was really avoiding it and it was like almost a point of shame for me. And I think that it showed up in our relationship in a lot of different ways that were not very healthy and very counterproductive to our success just based on like how I felt you didn't do anything yeah it was like I'm me saying it's yeah because I don't recall but because I held it to myself like I didn't I felt weird saying anything up until a certain point where I did and then it was like verbal vomiting all over you you were like okay yeah when you're with the entrepreneur like 
you got to talk finance. Mm-hmm. You got to talk like, yo, how long am I going to be supporting this dream for? It I- might not be financial. Like you might just think financial, but mm-hmm. it's not just strictly financial. That's like true. it's emotional. It's like hearing everything and I have to be supportive. And also sometimes like being honest when it's time to be honest and sometimes I guess, you know, like not being so honest and yeah, <laughs> when you have like a bad idea and, yes. you know, you, you want to say like, yo, like that's the worst idea I've heard, you know, but at the same time it's like, you know, you support. There may be a caveat because we are so different in how we think. So what I really appreciate and respect about you is the fact that you've always let the ideas play out because if we being honest, if we're being honest, for a really long time, you didn't understand what I did. To be honest, I barely understood what I did, yeah, was doing. Like, I, saying, I, I didn't you... understand what I was building, but I knew I knew it felt good. And but... I knew that it was, I was on to something, but I couldn't quite figure out some parts of the puzzle. But if, if all the blocks are not in play and you bring something to me, an unfinished blo- like project, I'm going to be like, yo, that, that's unfinished. Like, what are you talking about? I don't get it. And if you don't fully understand it, how do you expect me to understand it? That's and true. for a while, it was like, no, I don't get it. But did you think it was a bad idea? It's only because of the, the things that have happened and the ability to build on those things that you can even arrive at a place where you know if something actually works or where it does it or if it doesn't. Yeah, but so I'm like, saying before those trials and arrows, of course it was a bad idea. No, like, it wasn't. I do think it was a bad idea. But yeah, how can I'm, you say it was a bad idea? If because it wasn't a complete idea. And like not because But it was a vision. No. You don't so you don't think that vision is like helpful in that way? Because mm-hmm. without vision, we wouldn't even be like having this conversation. There are so many things that are currently <laughs> happening or have happened that outside of having that idea and executing on that idea that we wouldn't be having conversation or I could be working somewhere where then I'm not able to stay home with the kids. And then we're paying all this money for childcare and the kids are barely seeing us because all we do is work. You know what I mean? I feel like that those are choices. Those are choices that and intentional decisions. Those are choices that we make. Your business has evolved over time Mm -hmm. and you thought you were clear. I don't know that I thought I was clear. You thought, yeah, you thought you I were knew clear. I had I, a really good idea. And I wasn't clear because I was doing too many things to be clear. Yeah, but I'm saying you come to me with unfinished things. I'm going to be like, no, like. Because you know, I was processing. Yeah. You asked me if it was a good idea. I'm going to say no, because it's not finished. Like, I can't see it. Like, if but we you also can't see, see things differently. If, yeah. Like, uh, I'm more of a logical person. You I'm most not, definitely. I'm just be honest, you know. <laughs> definitely. And it might sound a certain type of way, being like, oh, logical, you know, like you don't dream and stuff. I do dream. But like, I'm more of like the logical, practical person. And I guess, you know, a lot of times that's where like faith comes into play, where it's like, you know, you have to be a dreamer. You have to be, you know, very optimistic to be an entrepreneur you can't be too realistic because you know like if you're realistic then you're not thinking outside of the box That's true. so and yeah i would say i'm very realistic and when you come to me with ideas sometimes i'm like yeah let, let it play out but to be like oh yeah this is a great idea no <laughs> You know what I really respect about that, though? We're so different in that way, but I also think that that's one of our strengths as a unit, because while I dream about a lot of stuff and I think about a lot of stuff, at one point, I remember when I would bring some ideas to you and you would be like, you wouldn't say it was trash. Like, you wouldn't be like, that idea is garbage, but you wouldn't give me like the enthusiasm I was looking for, but you would listen. And then you would ask me a lot of follow-up questions. And initially when we got together, I, it felt like, man, you don't see what I see. Like, I don't know that you really believe in what, I, like, what I'm building. You know, it felt that way. But the more I would answer your questions, not just respond to them, 
but think about them. I realized that your thought process helped me fill in gaps that I wouldn't consider otherwise, because we do all have our strengths. And I, I consider myself a visionary. I'm a very big picture person. I, over time, I've learned how to build the skill of executing those things and thinking with structure and intention and processes and strategy. But that's that's a learned skill. And I honestly feel like your thought process and feeling like, well, before I come to Nick with this idea, I should... <laughs> I should have a skeleton of how it's actually going to work. That has helped me kind of um, counter what is my innate way of thinking, which is just slap the idea out there and see what happens. Because as beautiful as that is, that can end up costing a lot of time, a lot of energy, and it can end up costing a lot of money and resources that you may not have. So both p sets of thought are needed. I've just found that it's been really helpful for us just in life, you know, and definitely for me in my entrepreneurial journey, because now that's just, it's almost become by default a way that I think. And even when I hear other entrepreneurs that come to me asking like, how did you do this? Or like, I have this idea. Now it's my default to think of, all right, that's cool. Good idea. But how are you actually going to bring this to fruition? Oh man. We're having so much fun, babe. Can I have 30 more minutes, please? 15. 15. Okay. We're moving and shaking. I wanted to ask something that really helped inspire growth in our conversation, in our relationship. But what do you think is the best way to discuss finances in relationships where entrepreneurship is involved? Especially if you are the number savvy person and your partner or your spouse, who is the entrepreneur, may not be as strong in that area. Yeah, it's, it's discussion. It's sitting down and figure out, at, figuring out the goals and just honestly being realistic. I always go back to like, yeah, like, let's be realistic. You know, it's good to, to dream, but like, let's be realistic. We haven't had that fight that money fight, even with this place, like purchasing this place, we can live off of one income. It's a thought that was in my mind when we, when we purchased this place. But the thing is talking, just communicating about the finance. Yeah. Yeah. Like, avoiding I, it like the plague, like I was. <laughs> it makes sense, you know, to avoid it, but yeah, you know, that's not like. It's right not thing. good. Don't do it. It doesn't make sense to avoid it. Cause it. No, like it's, it's easier to avoid it. You know what's funny though? For a really long time, I did think it was easier, but based on the amount of shame and like insecurity I carried ar around because of it, it really wasn't the easier thing to do. You know, it was the scarier thing to do to have the conversations, but I also think that part of that was that self-acknowledgement of like, this is an area of weakness for you, but if you don't ever face it, it will continue to be an area of weakness for you, you know? And at one point when I did the Rutgers Business Accelerator Program, it was almost like I had a light bulb moment for my business finance mentor. He, when I met him, he was like, tell me your numbers. And I, I was like, well, what do you mean? I mean, he was like, your numbers tell a story. And, <laughs> and I think about stories, like I get a story, you know, that's a creative spin on an experience. Numbers do the same thing, but I'd never, I'd never equated it to, you know, an actual story being told. And I think that growing up, I've always just kind of had a fear of math. I guess the main thing I'm trying to say is until you face the thing, it will always be a sore spot. So it's easier to face the thing than to try to run away from it because even though it may seem easier, you're actually burdening yourself when you don't have yeah. the conversations so and like I say do the like, scary things. It, I do get that. Because there was one conversation that we had in 2021. And honestly, I can't remember what it was that initiated the conversation, but that conversation was such a... It was almost like I felt like a weight had been taken off of me once I, I'd really expressed what it was, you know, for me and with the business and also like with our relationship and how I felt like certain things around finances for me in that time equated to like, like a power thing.
you've never been one to be like, yeah, you have to do what I say because I wear the pants and because I have all the money. You know, you've never done that. But in my mind, I think subconsciously, it's like, well, you get to make all the decisions because you're the one that has the consistency. And it put me in a very disempowering position, I think mentally for myself, but it was me doing it to myself. Cause again, you'd never initiated this. The moment I had that conversation with you, it was almost like an ability to break free from like whatever story I'd been telling myself. But it also then allowed us to have a really honest conversation, not just about the money piece, but about kind of like where we were going and vision. And so even in hearing you talk about why it's important to just have these conversations, which I wholeheartedly agree, I feel like we think the same way about things, but we just operate from a different perspective because you're and you talking about like knowing what the plan is knowing what things are that's vision you have a vision with like how you order finances or what the goals are what the priorities are I think that way but just about life career and relationships overall from a position of joy in order to help those things like come to reality so it's really cool. interesting you know cool yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I'm having so much fun. Okay, so next question. Before getting married or engaged to an entrepreneurial spouse, what are three main questions that you believe every person should ask in their partnership with an entrepreneur? Things that we probably didn't consider or things that you wish you would have asked before, <laughs> before we started on this journey. Yeah. So the first thing, I guess, timeline, how long do we check back in mm-hmm. to say how it's going? Mm-hmm. Because I'm just, we can be on this entrepreneur journey for our life, you know, like, but never check in. So I feel like setting timelines, like sitting down with the person, and what are you trying to achieve in this amount of time? Another thing is entrepreneurship is hard. And I personally, you know, like, like kids. So one of the thing is family, like what are the family structure, how many kids you're looking to have, or are you looking to have kids? Because I feel like entrepreneurs sometimes will put off the kids, pursue that entrepreneurship, that journey. And then, you know, 20 years down the line, it's like, man, like I wish I had taken the time to have kids and raise kids if that's what you want. So yeah, timeline, kids. Those are two main things I think we should discuss. And for us, <laughs> one of the the bigger thing is faith. So like having faith. I'm very flexible and calm and but like yeah, like having faith. Because faith is like, you know, believing that something is going to happen that you can't see or you can't feel or yeah so I think that that should be a discussion also like when looking to partner with an entrepreneur yeah, yeah I could probably go on about other stuff, <laughs> <but>. <laughs> nah. for the third you know like it's like setting the goal the expectation time to check in family if you're looking to have family structure and the faith aspect yeah and like honestly why do you want to become an entrepreneur or like why are you pursuing that entrepreneurship career or path mm-hmm. because yeah it might be something where you might yeah it might not be for you <laughs> like you're just doing it for the money and like it doesn't work out and yeah. you spend all this time and money trying to make something work that was literally never meant for you yeah that's that oh baby those are good no for real those are really good really good you answered that so well on the fly I personally had this question in mind because I had some questions that I feel like just based on our experiences and things that we've gone through things that I wish I would have brought up or that I wish would have been asked of me to make me think about things differently as I went on so I'm just going to share some of those questions real quick. And I'd love to hear your take if you have one on them. The first thing I would say that someone should ask is, what is your vision and how are you planning on realizing it? Which I think comes back to your thing around like, what are you doing? What are you actually doing? Why do you want to do it? 
and what is motivating your ambitions in pursuing this thing. The second question I would probably ask is, what is your mission and how are you currently pursuing it? Because vision and mission are not the same. And I think that when someone is really clear on their mission, it helps it helps provide clarity around how they'll actually actively pursue their vision. You know what I mean? So it becomes more than a nice idea and it's a little more tangible. And I also think that it's something that helps anchor whatever their pursuits or goals are, even when things get really hard, which I think kind of goes back to you, what you mentioned about faith, you know, because if you're not clear on your mission and why you're doing the thing that you're doing, when things get hard, it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm good on it. I don't need to do that. I don't need to finish it. I don't need to pursue it. And then you're it's like stuck hopping from one thing to another and you don't see any real progress. And then you wonder why nothing's working because it's like, well, you didn't pursue it long enough. You know, the third thing I would probably ask is how are you currently running your business if you have one? And what are some of the gaps, if any, that you're aware of and how do you plan on filling them? Being that this journey for us has been something that's been like very much on the fly that was never a consideration or a thought until I started investing in like coaching myself or mentorship and guidance. And it was only through those relationships that I began to see or even think like, oh, everything that I think of isn't always so great. You know, <laughs> I have a lot of ideas, but I'm lacking strategy in this area or I've been doing this thing for a really long time, but there are so many gaps that are preventing me from taking things to the next level. So if somebody already has a business, that's definitely something I would ask. And I also think it could be helpful because then you as a partner could then help support them in their gaps. Like going back to the example of how I would think about things, you know, I would think big picture, but you helped me see where the gaps were just based on some of the questions that you would ask that I would never consider just because that's just not how my mind works, you know? And then lastly, I think this is one of the really important ones. And it goes back to what you said is what is your communication style (laughs) and how do you expect me? Ah, dang, Navit. (laughs) What is your communication style? generally speaking, but also as an entrepreneur? And how do you expect me as your partner or spouse to support or contribute to your vision or mission, if at all? You know what I'm saying? Because I think for a while, I don't know that I ever expected you to like take on my stuff as yours, but I do think that at one point it became very evident that we would sometimes be saying the same thing, but saying it very differently. And so we had to understand or learn to understand our communication styles. But I honestly think that the, the time when it became really effective was when I started to evaluate how I communicated myself. Like, am I actually thinking through everything that I'm saying? You know, am I articulating all of my thoughts? I would say a whole lot because I felt like I needed you to understand each and every single piece of the puzzle. But for you, hearing it, it probably comes off as like a lot of extra stuff that you don't necessarily, like trash, you know what I mean? Not trash, but overwhelming information. And so I feel like I've had to learn over time your communication style and like when I need to pare things down or to say a thing and then you tell me where you may not understand or you let me know what what more information you may need. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's important. Yeah. And who you communicate into. Yeah. Because a lot of times we might have good intention in our mind, you know, like we know exactly what we want to say and we say something and the person that's receiving it receive it completely, completely different, different from what <laughs> no, I'm saying. And it, it happens. It's like, yeah, you talking about apples and the person that you're talking to is thinking about grapes or cherry you know like it's 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 true (laughs) and I think even with this point of business again thinking about how would you like me to support you you know I think it's something to ask because sometimes we may put the expectations certain expectations on our partner or spouse that they're not even aware of you know generally speaking so I think it's really important to have a conversation of what does support look like to you what does accountability look like to you what role do you want me to play in this if any you know like you just want me to listen or do you actively want me to do stuff you know what I mean 
and just having really clear expectations, boundaries, and parameters around what those things are. Yeah, I feel like this is like deep diving for someone that's or a couple that's starting off and getting into entrepreneurship. The whole idea of mission and goals and all that stuff to speak a language that people understand. It's just like, yeah, what are your goals? You know, what are you looking to achieve as far as this entrepreneurship? And sometimes the person might not know what they're trying to achieve. That's might true. not be, they probably can't tell you. It's like, yeah, I like cars. So I want to open a body shop, you know, but you don't know how they're going to get there. But the main thing is like, yo, I like cars. Like, why do you like cars? It's just asking questions and just having like a goal in mind. Yeah, that's good. All right. You did say that it was a deep dive and we have gone really deep. So now I want to bring it back up, lighten it up a little bit. Cause I don't want people to think that it's like so heavy, right? Cause I, like you said earlier, there's a lot of joy and marriage comes with its challenges, but it comes with its wonderful parts too. And most of it is wonderful, at least in, I believe in our experience. So what would you say has been your greatest joy of being married to an entrepreneurial spouse? <laughs> <laughs> I have my own personal answer, but I'll, I'll share that later. I think one of the biggest things to be married to an entrepreneurial spouse is uncertainty. Like That's a you, joy? Um, yeah, it's uncertainty. Like you never know what's going to happen, like what idea they're going to try and like bring to the table. I mean, you can leave it there. Like, yeah, I don't want you thinking too hard now. <laughs> well, the reason why I asked that question is because I think, and, and I mean, I don't know, I am the entrepreneur, but you're also an entrepreneur. Like you have, you've had a lot of businesses since I've known you, like, especially within the past decade, you've done massage therapy, you had your photo business, you have started to do videography stuff, and now you have the photo booth business. So you've had like four different businesses. So you're also an entrepreneur. So I may be biased in thinking this, but I do think that one of the greatest joys of being married to an entrepreneur, and it may also be one of the biggest challenges if we're being completely honest, is the fact that they keep you on your toes. I feel like it I'm makes saying, life like, interesting. It's, it's the uncertainty. Yeah. Like It's like a joy, but it's to... also a challenge. Yeah. It can be a challenge. I think the spontaneous aspect. You don't think that's like kind of sexy? Fun? <laughs> think as male, as men, as we get older, that, you know, it, you know, that stuff, you know, it's <laughs> not as excited as when you're younger. For but real? Like, yeah. As you get older, it's kind of like you want to be certain about certain things. You know, you want certain things like, okay, well, not to say like stuck in the routine, but you want to be like, all right, cool. You know, at seven o'clock every day, I'm having supper. At five o'clock every morning, I'm waking up. You know, like it's- But I feel like we have, in terms of life routine, we actually do have that. Our, yeah. We have a solid home routine. I don't know. I, I want to put the verdict out on this one. I would love to, I'm going to take the mic off. I'd love to hear from you guys if you're listening, what your thoughts are to this idea of spontaneity and wanting routine as you get older, especially if you have an entrepreneurial spouse, because I do also think like, what if it were that everything was the same all the time? It would get stale. Your relationship would get stale, you know, like it, I don't know. <laughs> it would be so monotonous. But, like, but that's the personal and the personality for a lot of people. Like they just want that routine. Like Are you that becoming someone that wants that routine? No, I'm just saying for a lot of people, like you get older, you want that routine. Yeah. Do but you I, would, you would, don't think you would get bored? I don't like, think you would get bored if you're doing something that you enjoy doing. And I'm talking about life. You know, you get up and you doing everything that you enjoy doing throughout the day. Like, I think you get bored. I mean, that's true. But you know what it is also? I think that with the thing that I've built out, it could be routine, but because of the fact that it's always different based on what 
brings the individual's joy is always changing. And there are like standard operating processes, but the way that those things are executed varies depending on the individual. Cause I, I also think over time since becoming a mom, where before I always liked the idea of spontaneity, where I was like, I don't want anybody to put me in a box. I've expressed this many times, especially on the show. I thought I thrived on creative, creative freedom, you know, but after having kids, I just found that that just made me really frustrated and it left me feeling overwhelmed and chaotic. So right. I actually like the routine now, but I also like to engage with routine with a sprinkle of creativity so yeah, i don't feel saying, limited that's fine but for me i think having a routine it takes up less brain power Agreed. to think about certain totally. things like i might do something outside of it which is the sprinkle but this is my routine like i play basketball every tuesday now it's like that's my routine toastmasters mm -hmm. every wednesday that's my routine Maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that having the routine I found has been really helpful in not only getting family life together, but I also think it helps as far as setting expectations within the relationship. You know, like having a calendar or a shared calendar can be really helpful, which we discussed in one of the past episodes. If you guys don't know, check out how to manage your time tasks and to do's with joy. It was a really good episode, if I do say so myself. But I do think that having that routine is really helpful in maintaining the relationship and communication as well. I feel like I know what you're going to say with this one, but I'm going to ask anyway. In your opinion, what is one key thing that leads to success in long-term relationships, especially when business and money is involved? <laughs> <laughs> I know we've talked about this a bit before, and it's not that like that is very important you know like what's his name talked about it Pastor Pastor Steven. <laughs> As say, the number one thing is sex i mean it it, it helps the number one thing there are different parts to this you know <laughs> there are levels to this <laughs> yeah, there, there are levels there are always levels yeah it's, uh, it's communication i knew you were gonna say it no it is but it's true <laughs> it, it is communication just communicating like what's what's going on mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's communication the one thing i agree for real because if you can communicate like everything else i think falls into place you know and the end you can nav better navigate it together so it's not just one person trying to figure out the thing or so, feeling the burden of it and communication is like <sighs> there is different levels of communication sure. because yeah, you could be just talking and not communicating. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh, yes. And you could be yelling, thinking you're getting your, cross, getting your point across and you're not really communicating. I agree. So we have gone now through personal journey stuff, love, marriage, and entrepreneurship stuff. And now we've arrived at the last part of this conversation, which is really just looking at the journey ahead. And this part, I feel like, is the fun part of our convo. Though it's all been amazing. What do you say? Aren't you having a good time? This goes against everything that I believe in. <laughs> you probably so, won't be doing it again for another nah, eight years. I'm just saying, like, so... I really appreciate it. And so do just, the listeners. Right, guys? Let us know. Leave a comment or something. Yeah. This took a lot of private, like, a lot of pulling for me to do because I'm a very... Try to keep my life private. Try to keep take that little space that I have. You have so much wisdom to share. Some juicy thoughts. Oh. Yeah. What's your question? Okay. <laughs> what is your dream vacation? I know what it was a couple of years ago, but I'm wondering if it's still the same. I feel like every vacation is kind of like a dream vacation. It's something where like you go somewhere and it's like, yo, like this is awesome. So it's always something to top. So for me, there's no real dream vacation as far as one thing. It's kind of like just enjoying wherever I go. Oh, that's good. So yeah, if it's... Your life is a vacation. That's kind of like the goal. Why are you always doing it to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for not leaving me hanging. 
Yeah. <laughs> so wherever you go, just enjoy it. Like we went on a cruise in December and that was a nice vacation. Is it a dream vacation? Yeah. Yeah. But it was great. So yeah, I just try to enjoy whatever it is. At one point, I wanted to go to Africa. It would be nice to to go, but I wouldn't say it's a anywhere there is like a dream vacation mm. because man, you can go to the most exotic place and get food poison. <laughs> you know, random stuff like that, or get bitten by a snake or something. You know, so like that dream vacation become like a nightmare. So. Huh? If you just like enjoy every place you go, just enjoy every little thing, then there's no dream, dream vacation. They all are, are small pockets of dreams. Yes. A couple of years ago, you know how I had my vision boarding process and like faith, family, fun, and the three sections. In the family piece, I remember put, putting create a life that you don't have to escape from. And at that point, it felt like such a heavy lift for me because I was like really in the thick of being at home just with the kids for a really long time. And I think seeing that reminded me of like what I aspired to, you know, the type of life I really wanted us to have and like me to have as a mother, not looking at motherhood as a chore or not looking at marriage as an obligation or whatever the case is. And I think that just that simple phrase really just changed my life at that point. This was also the season when I was like, I mean, I'm still obsessed with tiny houses, but where I was like, let's sell everything and get a school bus. <laughs> if I'm being real with myself, that was active escapism. I was trying to escape reality with the idea of being on the road and living in a school bus full time. Because realistically speaking, I don't think I'd actually want that for a couple months at a time, maybe, but not like full term. And it was also that same year that I started the journey to purpose because I realized rather than thinking about how to arrive at joy, like I have to do this, 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 and this in order to get to joy, realizing that you can really have joy throughout the journey as you are living in your purpose. And that's now what I get to teach and, you know, preach yeah. <laughs> to my clients and organizations yeah. that I work with in the process to how to do that with you know, one feel good thing at a time. Yeah, and for me, that's what it was. It was like, yeah, I'm happy, you know, even to go to work, like I was happy to go to work. I don't think it was something where it was like, yeah, I had a purpose. This was my purpose. My purpose was to listen to these patients and do this and do that. <laughs> no, it was like, yeah, like I'm just enjoying the now. I, but you like your job. I used to, yeah. but it's something, no, like, I mean, I, I used to. I mean, yes, because like, yeah, transition, like change, but transition also, and growing. But it was something where I never heard people, you complain about your job. People, they, you know, go on three, four, five, ten vacation. And it's like, kind of like, what are you running from? You know, like, what are you trying to escape from? Like, you're going to have, like, bad days. But if you generally try to enjoy it, then, you know, like, going to, like, an island, yeah, it's nice. But it's not a big deal. Because, no, for real, because like yeah, every it's day true. it's like, yeah, like I enjoy what I do. You know, I enjoy where I the, am. Yeah. I enjoy who I am. Yeah. But you're also not a very stress, stress inducing or induced person. I don't know if it's like your Caribbean upbringing uh, or if it's just like in your DNA and who you are. And so you were like born in the right place to like meet you as you are. But I think that that also has something to do with it. Like you're just, you've always been a very calming presence, you know? And I think, oh goodness knows, like God knew what I needed before I knew what I needed when I met you, for real. How can I best support your joy so you can feel supported in your journey? That's a really good question. I don't like chaos. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like chaos. Like. I who does well no, i can't say that some people like do like chaos. chaos yeah i stay away from it you know like i want peace <laughs> like and that's it you know i want peace if you're not gonna bring me peace i don't want to be around you so an accent how can you support me it's you know like bring peace don't bring any drama around me don't i'm just 
Oh, honest. you're into it. But you don't think I bring drama, no, do you? I'm just saying. Oh, like, like, don't bring any drama around, but I don't want that drama. Like, I don't want I drama want either. I want peace. And Goodness knows I don't like drama. Yeah. And I don't know, I've heard the past however long about this like safe landing concept being a safe space for you know your spouse or partner to express themselves i feel like just being like that safe space okay yeah i can do that <laughs> we're almost in the home stretch we got two more questions okay what is one thing you think every person should know about having an entrepreneur for a spouse when we're considering the rules of engagement and how to proceed in an entrepreneurial partnership relationship spousal arrangement <laughs> before you get engaged or otherwise <laughs> or i would say this to any type of relationship it's just yeah you know, like there's there are going to be ups and downs and just like sticking through the downs and join all of it, like and join the ups and you know, like sticking through the downs because they're going to be a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I think that's just relationships in general. When it comes to the idea of marriage, it's like, oh, it's such hard work. It's so hard. It's so, but it's like literally that's any relationship you have, you know, <laughs> it could be a relationship with your family, your siblings, your parents your friends, you know? And I think if people were to really just consider marriage or their intimate relationships, their partnership, whatever you want to call it, the same way they consider any other relationship, because at the foundation of what it should be, that's what it is, a relationship, you know? But then- it's not. <laughs> But it is. No, it not. is, babe. If it's something where you don't- It is a legal aspect of it. So it's not the same. You can't compare marriage to like any type of ship, friendship, relationship with family, relationship with friends at the end of the day with marriage and with marriage, there's a contractual agreement. I see what you're saying. And I agree. But I also think in terms of the ability to have choices and yeah. like choose to stay or choose to go, when you think about that in terms of just the foundational piece of having a relationship, yeah. like that's what makes marriages work or not work. Like, are you, I don't want to say, are you still willing to, to pursue this? I want to say friendship because that's what a marriage should be. It like, should be. But right. I think so many people, it, it especially in hard times, it can be very easy to lose sight of that. And I'm not talking about if somebody's like beating on you or if somebody is like unfaithful to you and like repeatedly like going through incidents of infidelity. You know, at that point, it's like you've made your choice. You don't want to be with this person anymore. Go on and live your best life. And I know that some people have very stern views on divorce and all of those things. But I honestly believe that life is short. God has put us here to live our best life. And he's also given us the ability to do that with his help and support. So it's not necessarily that like we have to be with a person that doesn't allow us to pursue his God-given like purpose for us, you know, or allow us to be our best selves. If that's the case, by all means, I think people should pursue their joy and their purpose, especially when children are involved because it doesn't, it's not good. It's not healthy, you know? But at the end of the day, I feel like friendship is supposed to be the basis of marriage. There is that aspect of having a covenant relationship that's different from any other type of relationship you would have. If there's something where love is involved, then there's also opportunity for understanding. And when it, where there's understanding, I think that a lot becomes possible, you know, even in the hard times. I hear you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have it, Nick. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Marriage should be based on like a friendship. And trust. And trust, yeah. Right? Yes, and, and respect. <laughs> For a male. No, in general, it should be mutual respect. Yeah, but I mean like the male value, like trust, respect, and honor, like. 
Women do the women do as well. Oh. From like a male perspective. A male perspective. Got it. That's that's all I'm speaking from a male perspective. Like the friendship. Because at times, you know, like you with someone, you're not gonna love them. Yeah. Like you're gonna go through things and it's like, yo, like I don't at this moment, like I don't. I could see it. I could see that being a thing. What's most important at the end of the day is that I actually still like you. I feel like you can fall out of love even for periods of a, at a time, but I feel like once you're in a relationship where you no longer like your person, then that's probably when it's time to be like, okay, maybe we should like evaluate other options. Like if you fundamentally still like the person, love love can come around. I always say this, 17 years after getting to know you or being with you like I am so grateful like praise God I don't just love you I actually still really 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 like you I enjoy your company I enjoy your presence like I like you as a person cool 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 I know we could talk about that forever all right it's been a long time way past the allocated time you've given me thank you baby I really appreciate it (laughs) In conclusion, do you have any last words that you'd like to share with the Jorney listeners? <laughs> Just enjoy your life. Yeah, like enjoy Just your life. live your life. Sure. Hey. Sure. Don't look to experts or anyone. Just enjoy your life. Do what you feel like you here put on this earth to do. And that's just live. And that's it. Now can it's I do been it? A long, it's been a long night. Just live your life. Hey, 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 hey. Instead of chasing that paper. No. For real. For real. Just do the verse. No. This has been awesome, babe. Thank you so much for indulging me and answering my many questions so thoughtfully. I gained a lot today. And I hope that you all that are listening to today's episode have gained a lot as well. Follow Nick and I don't want to be. <laughs> no. Don't follow him. Don't follow me. I don't want to be followed. <laughs> but follow Irie Vibes Photo Booth. Yeah, if you like, if you have an event, follow Irie Vibes Photo Booth. <laughs> but as far as Nicholas Reed, why? Right. See, I ain't even giving me a government. Yeah, as far as me, I do not want to be followed. But follow Irie Vibes Photo Booth. Yes. Let us know what has been your favorite part of today's episode. What is one joy gem or one tangible piece of information that you can take from this conversation and apply to your own journey to purpose in your love, marriage, or entrepreneurial journey? I'd love to know. Leave that in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about the Journey to Purpose and how a Journey to Purpose can support you in your life, career, or your, in relationships, or if you'd just like to learn a little bit more about what we do at the Journey to Purpose, make sure you head on over to ericlassan.com for more. We all know I can't leave this episode without giving you a joy gem. So here it is. <laughs> Today's joy gem of the day comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. And it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And verse eight says, love never fails. It's so true. And then if you skip down to 13, verse 13, just for a little sprinkle of of joy, it continues to say, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I love that scripture just because it fully articulates what love is. It can be really easy to define love through a very narrow scope where it's rainbows and butterflies. And if it's not perfect, then it's not good. But that's not the case. This scripture and this verse gives the full depth of what love is and how we as individuals can attain it 
but also share it with others and while also leading the quest of love and for love with grace, <laughs> because grace has to be involved in the process. If you're in a season of trying to figure out your relationships or you're trying to move forward and create some type of understanding where there may not be any, this verse is a really wonderful way to guide your understanding of how you can obtain more of it in a peace-led way. Okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, please let me know in the comments, like this episode, share it with friends. And if you have any thoughts that you'd like to contribute to today's conversation or any questions that you feel I've missed, drop those in the comments too. I love reading your messages and I love checking in with you guys and hearing what you're up to. In the meantime, in between time, if you don't want to miss out on any of my major journey updates, then you definitely want to subscribe to the Vibe Tribe <laughs> and join our newsletter, also known as Journey Mail. Every other week, I share joy-led insights, some techie tips, and some inspiration on how you can begin to lead your life, career, and relationships with more joy one feel good thing at a time. Once again, thank you so much for listening to the episode. And I can't wait for our next journey chat happening in the next couple of weeks, where we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome dun, 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 and how you can begin to navigate imposter syndrome with more joy, but more importantly, with scripture led truth. Just kick that imposter syndrome out of there. Okay. You are more than a conqueror and you've been built for this whatever this is, all the things, but I'm getting ahead of myself and I don't want to give y'all too much. Just make sure you're here for the next chat because it's going to be good. All right. I got to go for real now. I'm supposed to be meeting a friend for lunch. So I guess I'll talk to you guys later and I hope you have a wonderful and joy filled week until the next time. Remember we're on the journey together. One feel good thing at a time. Bye. <laughs>